I've read a lot of horror books in my lifetime, and I'm going to give you some of my recommendations on what to read. So let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Zach with Zach's Books, and today I've got for you some horror book recommendations, part one. I've read a fair amount of horror books so far in my life. That's kind of the genre that's really getting me into the books. And I'm going to share with you some of the ones I've read and what I would recommend to read because these ones are really good in my opinion. So let's get started. First up on the list is Shutter Island by Dennis Leanne. I really enjoyed this book. I think I gave it five stars. It's, on, it's in Goodreads. We'll post it down below. Uh, it's about a guy who is like a U.S. Marshal named Teddy Daniels and his new partner, Chuck. Um, I don't think they give him a last name. Chuck Ollie. Never mind. And they go to investigate like a missing inmate at this prison on an island. And uh, it, it has some really good twists in it. And I really enjoyed the ending. Uh, I thought it was more more horror thriller than just pure like thriller so that's why it's on this list but i highly recommend the book it was creepy it was eerie the ending was probably one of the biggest twists i've ever read in a book so i highly recommend it so that is shutter island dennis Leanne. next up is a joe hill book and that is nosferatu this book is kind of on the bigger side I think for him, uh, I think Fireman's a lot bigger, but I've not read that one yet. Nosferatu was really creepy. Uh, it's about this uh, weird dimensional like being that like takes children to this place called Christmas Land, and this woman gets her son taken from her, and like the, the dude like swindles them into thinking like, hey, there's candy. We're gonna go to Christmas Land where it's Christmas every day. And as a kid, you're like, oh, cool. That's exciting. And the mom figures out, like, what this being is, that it's taken many children, and she actually follows it to Christmas Land. you got to, like, go through a bridge or something like that to get there. And it's a really cool book. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to not explain more than that because I don't want to spoil anything for you. Just know that I gave this five stars, and it's really good. I highly recommend the book. Uh, give it a read. That's Nosferatu by Joe Hill. This next one is a shorter book, and I read it after watching the movie. I've already seen the movie a bunch of times, and that is Who Goes There by John Campbell. This book uh, influenced the movie with Kurt Russell, The Thing, and it's very similar in terms of the book versus the movie and the book was really cool um, it doesn't go as deep like the movies longer and so it doesn't it, they kind of like add on to the story but the book itself is really cool it gives you like that unsettling feeling of okay who's who like are you this thing are you human you know it, it like definitely like divides like this group of explorers up in the uh it's either alaska or antarctica but they're in like some really frozen a frozen tundra of like an area of where they're at and it's real and it's unsettling because there's like no communication with anyone on the outside world because of impending weather and one of the people goes nuts and destroys their stuff and i really recommend this book i think i gave it four and a half or four stars uh I would read it. It's really cool. It's a short read. It shouldn't take that long. Um, but that is Who Goes There by John Campbell. The next one on my list is probably just, in my opinion, probably the most, like, honestly, the creepiest book I think I've read this year. And that is The Sleep Experiment by Jeremy Bates. This book was so unsettling. It's about this doctor who... Uh, it, like did a bunch of research on like if you like don't sleep 
then like you're going to see a bunch of stuff and like people are going to go crazy. But he did the research, but he told the people who were going to help him absolutely nothing of that sort. They said, it's just an experiment I want to do because back in the day they did it like like a hundred or like 50 years ago and it did not turn out well, but we have better technology. We can survey it better. And if at any point they want to opt out, they can opt out. Um, meaning the two subjects, I think they're two foreign, like foreign students, um, from like uh, Great Britain or something like that. And so they come in and they come over and they are, they sign up for this experiment. They're going to get paid for it. And there's another two set of students who are helping the doctor go or the professor do the experiment on the other side that are going to be staying awake and keeping surveillance on the two students. And a lot of stuff goes wrong. It's just really creepy. Jeremy Bates does a good job, like, visualizing, like, what horror is going on in the book. And it's really cool. It's really good. I recommend it. I got a few other ones from Jeremy Bates that I got to read, and we'll see if I like those. But I would definitely recommend The Sleep Experiment. If you want something that's going to be really creepy. It's, it's a pure nightmare in my opinion. Next on my list is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This was a real good book. That horror haunted house aspect has been getting to me lately. I've been wanting a lot of haunted house books. And Home Before Dark I think kind of sparked that. Um... I really recommend it. Gave it five stars. It was about a family that moved into this house that had a past. Uh, it's between two timelines. It's from the perspective of a book that was written by this girl's father about the house and like what eerie things happen in it. And the other perspective is from the little girl all grown up. And she's trying to investigate what happened in this, why her dad is like, labeled as this bad guy and you kind of get to uncover the truth about what happened and it gets kind of like it get, it goes kind of back and forth on like who kind of did it towards the end um the whole time you're kind of thinking like okay well they're making it seem like this person did it but then it's like no this person did it and then you find out no this one did it so i thought that was kind of cool and it worked for me so I highly recommend this book. That's Home Before Dark. Next on my list is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. This book uh, was really good. I read this because I had read My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix as well, and I absolutely loved it. And so I figured I'd give this one a read. It's pretty much about like a haunted Ikea store. And a whole lot of weird things happen in the store. Uh, the chapters are done pretty well. They're, like, written as, like, furniture pieces. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce that one. During. During. But it's, like, a whole bunch of just, like, furniture pieces or the chapters and these group of people, like, unsettling things happen to the store, like, when they come back in the next day and they're just confused as to what's going on. So the people are thinking people are breaking in. And so the surveillance cameras like get shut off every night. And so they have a group of people actually stay the night to investigate. And a lot of bad things happen. And I thought it was really cool. My wife and I actually did a buddy read on this and she enjoyed it as well. Yes, I did. So that is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. Next on my list is one that I actually just recently read. And that is Hex by Tem Thomas Old. Helvelt. I can't pronounce his last name. I'm sorry, Thomas. Um, this book was really creepy. Uh, I gave it four stars. It's about a witch who's like terrorizing this town, and then um, her eyes and her mouth are stitched shut, and she's like treated as like a, a witch because back in the day she did something, and like the, everyone in the town thought she was a witch, and so they like killed her son, and then they stitched her mouth shut. And, no, they had her kill her son. They made her kill her own child. And then her son, like, came back, but then she stitched her eyes closed and her mouth shut. And she's been alive for, like, hundreds of years. And the town is, like, cursed. And so 
the elders of the town, meaning like the parents, the grandparents and stuff like that, know the curse. And so what they do is the next generation of kids coming up don't want to like deal with it. They want it to just like end and just be done. Like they don't care. Like there's they're being surveillance to like at all times. The kids aren't allowed to like go and live somewhere else because once you're like born into the town or you move there, like the curse is on you. Like there's at some point in the book of this couple that's about to move into the town and the real um, one of the people who was like selling the house is like, are you sure you want to live here? Like there's another place right down the road and they're like, no, we want to live here. And the guy's like, are you sure? Because there's another place that's cheaper, right? Down. And they're like, no, we want this one. And so they move in and they're cursed. So the ending was also really creepy. I'm still trying to process it myself. But I thought it was really well written, and it was a really good book. So I highly recommend Hex by Thomas Old Hulveld. I'm sorry, Thomas. I'm just going to call you Thomas Old. Next on my list, I've got some Stephen King books for you. And the first one I have is Thinner. Uh, this is one he wrote is Richard Bachman. This is one of the earlier ones I read when I started my Stephen King journey. And this one is about a fat lawyer who is getting some action from his lady in his car while they're driving back from a dinner. And he hits a gypsy woman. And he's got so much connections with the town between, like, the judge, the police officer, and other connections that he pretty much gets off with just a slap on the wrist. But the gypsy woman's father uh, happened to be in the convenience store when she got hit. And so he knows that it was carelessness done by the white man. And so he puts a curse on him and he starts losing a tremendous amount of weight, like fast. And everyone's like, oh, what's this diet you're on? And he's like, I'm not on a diet. I'm literally eating the same foods, but it's like going down. So then he's realizing now that it was the gypsy who touched him at the courthouse and he said thinner. So ever since, he's been losing a lot of weight, and the Gypsy also did some stuff to the other two people, and the book really depicts like the horror of what happened to the other two people pretty well, as well as what's going on to Billy, the, uh, the lawyer who hit the Gypsy. And I rated this, I think, four stars. Uh, again, down in Goodreads, you'll see it all down there. But I really enjoyed this book. I highly recommend it. And the ending is another one of those Stephen King kind of twists, in my opinion, towards the end. So I'd give it a read. I really enjoyed it. So that is Thinner by Richard Bachman, Stephen King. Last but not least, I have for you a recent read of Stephen King, and that is Desperation. So this book was kind of like a Christine for me, where it kind of surprised me with how good it actually was. It's a long book, and I think it's definitely worth it to read the whole thing because it's just really good. It's a good book. It um, doesn't really crack my top five, but it was a really good read. So this kind of goes with The Regulators, which was another Bachman book, which unfortunately I didn't really enjoy Regulators that much. But now that I've read Desperation, I feel like if I reread Regulators, it will be a better book in my opinion. Uh, I just got to reread it. So this is about a town in Nevada called Desperation that is overtaken by this evil entity known as TAC. Or, yeah, TAC. And it's originally in possession of a police officer um, uh, who's like uh, Officer in Trajan. Or in Trajan? I think it's in Trajan. And... He's like this really stock, like this really built police officer guy, and the evil entity like keeps like needing to change bodies because of it, it, it like decays over time, and so uh, after a little while, he the cop literally will pull people over on the road and like accuse them of doing something, and then just capture them and take them and leave them in a prison cell, and this little boy who's got like this like just goes off the ability to pray like gets him and these group of people out of the prison and like they escape uh there's an old writer in it 
uh, a family with an RV. There's a whole bunch of cool characters in this. And the ending is pretty cool. I really enjoyed the ending of it. But I really recommend this book. It was really cool. It was really good. It was it was something that actually kept me intrigued with reading it, more going along with it. And so I didn't really feel the need to really set it down. I really wanted to just read it in a day, but it was too big to read it in the day at the time I started. So, But I highly recommend it. I think I gave it four stars. It might have been five. Again, down in Goodreads. Uh, but yeah. That is Desperation by Stephen King. So those are my horror book recommendations, part one. I'm going to have a few more uh, videos like this. Like I said, I've read a very good amount of horror books. Um, this one I wanted to kind of talk about ones I have not talked about that much. And so that's why you kind of saw some like, what is that? Uh, so the other ones I'm going to have for you are going to be coming up soon. And... What did you think of the horror book recommendations I had? Have you read them? Let me know what you think about them. What are some horror books that you really enjoyed? Let me know down in the comment section down below. What are some ones you recommend for me to read or take a look at? Uh, otherwise, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!